If you guys love Bad Day HQ, don't forget to check out Good Day HQ, available at youtube.com slash gooddayhq. It features the best in reality television, travel shows, and just general fun stuff to bring a smile to your day. Covering an area of some 210,000 square kilometers, the Alps are the largest mountain system in Europe. In Austria, the Alps cover almost three quarters of the country, offering some of the most spectacular scenery on the planet. Majestic snow-capped peaks serve as guardians to the serene and sheltered valleys below. But sometimes, these protectors become aggressors, like the day a juggernaut of snow and ice roars down on a defenseless mountain village known as Blanc. Blanz, Austria, is a small village in the Alps, nestled in a valley below the towering peaks of the Mont Kolf and the Falf Mountains. In the 50s, you would just found, have found uh, a few houses and a church. I think about 350 people lived there at that time, but only a few of them lived at the center, and all the others lived at uh, separated farms all over the hills. In the winter, the area around Blondes creates conditions that are ideal for the formation of avalanches. The geology contributes to the sliding of the avalanches. There is really no range of rough surfaces for the snow to hold on to, to bind on to. With speeds approaching 450 kilometers per hour and pushing a wave of compressed air, an avalanche can pulverize virtually anything in its path. For more than 600 years, the villagers in Blondes have been living with the awesome beauty of the Alps and the inevitable danger of avalanches. In 1954, 19-year-old Siegfried Jenny works on a farm outside Blondes with his parents, Alphonse and Susanna. Although the rest of his siblings have left home, his older brother, Alois, remains on the farm. I grew up in a happy family. I guess I was a latecomer. My siblings were all much older. We ran a small farm with some large and small animals. Elsewhere in the village of Blondes lives 21-year-old Anton Turcher. He farms along with his father, Leo. His mother, Antonia, cares for 8-year-old Josef and 5-year-old Maria Katerina, a spirited, happy child. Sehr gut. 1954, in 1954, 40% of the inhabitants lived off of agriculture. Living near the center of Blondes is the village school teacher and principal, Eugen Dobla. He lives with his wife Lydia and their four children. The fall was wonderful. There was no precipitation at all until Christmas Eve. Eugen's 79-year-old mother also lives in Blondes. She is known in the village simply as Mother Dobla. After a mild fall, January 9th, 1954, brings the heaviest snow of the season. And with time, the snow became higher and higher. And with the snow, grew the worry about avalanches. There were avalanche warnings all over the country uh, because everyone knew it's a very, very dangerous situation. Sunday morning, January 10th, 9 a.m. Warnings proved to be correct as a small avalanche rushes down a nearby valley. The heaps of snow became bigger and bigger. On the street, there was barely any traffic. The walkways were practically deserted. Everybody stayed in their houses. Monday morning, January 11th. Dawn finds Siegfried Jenny at breakfast with his parents and brother. 
da haben wir im Wohnzimmer das Frühstück eingenommen. We ate our breakfast in the dining room. Very little was said while we were eating, and we felt uncomfortable because we knew that the situation was very dangerous. Weil man wusste, dass es sehr gefährlich ist. Despite the risk, Siegfried and his father go to the barn to tend to their animals. A few moments later, they are joined by Alois, Siegfried's brother. Plötzlich beginnt ein gewaltiges Tosen. Suddenly there was a powerful roaring and the building started to come apart. The barn window was immediately smashed from the avalanche. My father yelled, Hallo! which meant an avalanche, and it was immediately dark in the barn. Und uh, gleich wird es dunkel im Stall. Ich drehe mich zur Talseite. I turned right around and held my hands over my head. Und, uh, and there was even enough time to say a prayer. Suddenly, it simply took me with it. And then I hit my head against the hard snow. My hands had already been torn away. And I thought that I would soon suffocate in this condition. At the Turcher farm, Anton comes in from working with his father to make coffee. Antonia and the two younger children are still asleep upstairs when Anton returns to the house. I was in the kitchen. As I was bent over the stove, the bang occurred and the rumbling came over me. I was pressed against the stove, still kneeling, and I had on top of my back boards that fell from the roof and I was close to suffocating from the dust created by the broken walls and the snow and the pressure created by the avalanche. Zusammengebrochenen Mauern und dem ungeheuren Luftdruck, den die Lawine verursacht hat. The powerful avalanche sweeps Anton and part of the house away before finally coming to rest further downhill. Ich dachte natürlich, dass ich jetzt sterben muss. I thought that of course I was going to die. But then I got some air. At first, everything was completely black. And I could not free my arms. My worry for my family pushed me to the ends of my strength and I began to dig with my hands in the hard snow and then later with a little piece of wood. Then I could climb onto the stove and from there I could see the first little bit of light. Then I climbed on top with my feet and my elbows like a mountain climber or a caver, and then I could force my way out of the opening. When Anton pulls himself from beneath the snow, he finds his familiar world transformed by the terrible force of the avalanche. The same avalanche miraculously releases Siegfried Jenny. Luckily, he remains above the surface of the snow, unlike many less fortunate who have been buried by the avalanche. Anschließend stehe ich auf. I stood up and looked at myself to see whether everything still functioned and if I was in one piece. My clothes were in shreds and I had a bruise on the back of my left hand, which was bleeding. There was chaos everywhere and the hayloft was lying below me in the direction of the valley. When I looked for the house, I saw only a box with four corners. The roof was gone. My mother was standing in the window and calling out, Where are the other two? I called out very loudly for my father and my brother, but there was no reply. 
a neighbor arrives at the Yeni farm and sends Siegfried into the village to seek medical attention for himself and his mother. Neither are fit to help search for survivors. They eventually find shelter at Mother Dobla's house. In afternoon, more and more people came in, those who were injured. And in the end, there was a total of 14 people in this house. Meanwhile, Anton Tercher searches frantically for his family. After I screamed, I heard an answer from my father, coming from what was left of the barn. And then the neighbors yelled to us that my mother and my brother were still alive and were in a pile of hay in their barn. I began to look for my sister. The villagers of Blondes, who managed to dig themselves out of the avalanche or escape its devastating power, now face the daunting prospect of searching for survivors buried in the snow. They had no machines and nothing. They just, uh, I think they had their shovels and, and their hands. As they claw through the snow, survivors cannot know that the mountains above are not through with them and more destruction is on its way. January 11th, 1954. In the Austrian Alps, a massive avalanche has fallen from the peak of the Falf Mountain and ripped a swath of destruction through the village of Blondes below. Throughout the day, rescuers from the village search for survivors in the deep snow, but call off their efforts as daylight begins to fail. Many return to the town center, fearing that another avalanche is imminent this time from the snow-packed peaks of the Montcalm. One of them is Eugen Dobla, who decides to move his family to a safer location in the village. On his way, he stops at the Adla, an inn owned by his brother. He finds several villagers there and tells his brother that they need to find a safer place. Tucked away at Mother Dobla's house, Siegfried Jenny waits to hear about his missing family members. I naturally was always thinking about what had happened to my father and brother. Again and again I experienced that some people had been found buried alive while others had been found dead. We lived between hope and fear about what had happened. Everyone was afraid. It is not long before their fears are realized. High above, the Montkalf can no longer contain the snow on its peaks, and a second avalanche thunders down on the beleaguered village. At Mother Dobla's house, unsuspecting survivors of the first avalanche make the best of their situation. And it worked beten, and it was three rosenkränze hintereinander. We prayed three rosaries, one after the other. As we were saying the third rosary, there was suddenly very great pressure on the house. Children and adults were screaming and everything became loud. The room fell apart like a house of cards, and then it took me with it. Once again, Siegfried Jenny is swept away by the uncompromising force of an avalanche. This time, he is buried below a mountain of snow and debris. I remained in the middle of the wooden rubble. I was crying very loudly for help. But after I cried for help three or four times, there was no oxygen left. And I had to wait for a while until I had enough oxygen again. Elsewhere in the village, Word reaches Eugen Dobla that another avalanche has fallen, this time taking his mother's house with it. Eugen, his wife Lydia, and several others hurry to the site of the latest tragedy. About 20 minutes after the avalanche stopped, six men and a woman came from the village. I called for help again, very loudly, and then someone said, stop. Someone is here. 
They located me and immediately began to remove the snow with picks and shovels. We have gleich angefangen mit Pickel und Schaufel den Schnee zu entfernen. Siegfried is brought out of the snow for a second time and taken back to a safe house in the village. Daneben auf der Ofenbank lag da. It was then that I thought, where is my mother now? She was actually dug out of the avalanche before me, when a 16-year-old girl saw a sliver in the snow somewhere, and underneath it lay my mother. She had almost suffocated because she had snow in her mouth. As exhausted village rescuers continue to search for survivors of the two avalanches, the enormity of their task becomes clear. They desperately need outside help. By Tuesday morning, January 12th, 1954, the snow has finally stopped falling on Blons, Austria. With roads blocked and telephone lines down after two avalanches sweep through the area, villagers send for help on foot. We sent out three boys that were told to walk to the head office to report the disaster to the regional head officer. The response to the plea for help arrives on Tuesday, January 12th. There were, I think, hundreds of people uh, who went in with skis because there was no other way to get into this valley. Uh, you had to go on skis. Uh, and they went in, even as it was still dangerous to go there. But they said, we have to help, we have to go there. And they went in uh, to bring help and to help the people there to uh, find uh, maybe if there are still survivors. Finally, on Wednesday, January 13th, a full-scale rescue operation arrives from Switzerland and the American military stationed in Austria. Helicopters ferry the injured to hospital. I discussed a rescue operation plan with the police in Blondes. I knew the other villagers quite well, so I was able to tell them to look for two men in this house, three men in that house. Eugen Dobla's mother is recovered from beneath the snow and debris of her house. We lost three, all three houses. But luckily our lives were spared. And that's what really counts. You can replace all things, but not human lives. Siegfried Jenny and his mother survived both avalanches. Siegfried's father and brother, Aloise, are found dead in the barn where the first avalanche struck. The Turcher family is touched by tragedy as well. Sadly, and this was the hardest loss, was the loss of my five-year-old sister, who was moved from her bed and underneath the house, was killed by a rafter from the roof. She died on the spot. She did not have to suffer. Blan suffers one of the worst avalanche tragedies in the history of the Alps. 57 people die, and many others are injured. Practically everyone in Blans is touched in some way by the disaster. 29 houses and 50 stables are completely destroyed. 91 men, women, and children are left homeless. Two weeks after the avalanches strike Blondes, the Austrian government appoints a rehabilitation committee to coordinate reconstruction of the village. Government and private contributions total millions of dollars. Yeah, Property-wise, everything was destroyed. Our house, 
the barn. Without help from the government, we could not have built ourselves another house and would have been forced to move out of the village. Along with the reconstruction in Blans, new avalanche measures are built high above the village. The security measures, which has be, had been done in the, in the following years, uh, uh, made it a very secure region until today. They rebuilt the forest, they, they made a, a lot of snow bridges and, and other measures of technical measures for billions of dollars. Today, the village of Blondes has a population of about 350 people. It continues to depend primarily on agriculture, while striving to make inroads in the tourist industry. In 2004, on the 50th anniversary of the disaster, the 1954 avalanches are commemorated in Blondes with presentations, displays, and photography exhibits. But those who survived the tragedy need no reminder of that terrible day when their lives were changed forever. My mother did not really ever forget the death of my sister, and she carried this sorrow her whole life. Danger makes people tougher, definitely. Some people have to struggle against water, others have to struggle against wind, and we had to fight an avalanche in snow. Somehow it gives people energy. It is dangerous, but I stayed. If you guys are preparing for the apocalypse or want to survive a disaster or just want to have a really awesome camping trip, check out the products we have in the links below. Just by shopping for these products, you help support Bad Day HQ. In fact, any shopping you do in Amazon while going through these links will actually help us produce more great content for you guys. Thank <laughs> you.